somehow the Galactic Star Cruiser returned. <laughs> yeah, right. Uh, we're going to talk about this. Uh, the Wrap just put an article out today. They've got uh, Len Testa from Touring Plans saying that he believes Disney is surveying people now to see how they can fix and reopen the Galactic Star Cruiser. It wouldn't surprise me because there, that'd be an awful, huge financial loss and waste of space and everything else. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time no, Disney wasted space. No, I wouldn't be, space. but I'm just saying, you know. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna talk about this, uh, give some thoughts and opinions on it. Uh, before we get to it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. Get woohoo if you do. Woohoo. Um, yeah. So for those of you who don't know the story behind the Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser LARPing hotel for people with entirely too much money who don't know what to do with it during these trying economic times. Uh, it was a thing that lasted about a year. It didn't look anything like Star Wars. It did not promise the immersion that uh, you know they were touting. And um, it, yeah, it closed because nobody could afford it either. Nobody wanted to go. Nobody could afford it. It was, it was like forty hundred bucks minimum. Yeah, you know, up to like six thousand were like the baseline. Yes, and uh, again, what was promised and what was delivered uh, to two totally different things. And, um, you know, it did not look like like uh, Star Wars at all. It looked like Star Trek. Uh, this thing was roasted massively, even by the mainstream media. People said it was a terrible, terrible idea. And th there are so many things that they could have fixed with it. And now it seems like they're surveying people who actually did the experience, who burned $5,000, and they're asking them what they could do to change it. And they're giving them some suggestions. Now, Len Testa who uh, runs touring plans and he's actually a Disney insider. He's been around for quite a long while, time, actually. long time. Um, he seems to think that this is Disney testing the waters to see about reopening it. Cause again, they've got this empty building sitting there. that's been a freaking billion dollars on it. Now it could just be since they're, they're surveying people who went like, you know, more like market research about what not to do next time. It could yeah. be that too, to be fair. Yeah, it, it could it could be. And some people, there are people that disagree with Testa. I guess they asked some other insiders. They think that this is basically an exit interview. Yeah. What, what went wrong? You know, what did we do? And that's also a very valid possibility. How the hell do we explain this to Nelson Peltz and the shareholders? You they're, know? Well, they're doing it right ahead of the of the earnings call. Because yes. you know they're going to get asked about it because they, they closed it, what, the end of September? So at the end of the, uh, the fiscal year. Yep. So they're going to get asked about it. Yep. So this thing, yeah, they burned like a billion dollars. They said that they got the survey and uh, it suggests to some that current CEO Bob Iger and other Disney executives may be rethinking their decision to shutter it completely. Questions in the survey, some say, point to a desire to rework and reopen it. This is what Len Testa said. He said it's better than 50-50. Um, he said if they were going to lock the doors and walk away, they wouldn't be emailing every person who was on the Star Cruiser to do a survey about how it might change. True. Uh, one theme park insider quipped about the potential resurrection. They might as well call it the Phoenix new spaceship, the Phoenix. So what, um, well, if they even keep it as a star Wars thing that, well, that's true. I mean, they could, you know, they could turn it into like the most magical princess space princess parlor. I mean, it'd be kind of dumb thing. because they have all those rooms or something like space, but still. So they talked about all the mistakes. They said that they had a bungled marketing campaign, an exorbitant price point. Uh, demand remained low. The company canceled voyages on several dates. And in May, they announced they were going to close it at the end of September. So we're mm -hmm. talking like a little over two weeks after they closed it. And they're already surveying people yep. to see what what's up. They said only 71,000 people experienced 274 voyages of the Star Cruiser and it had an average occupancy oh, rate of 70%. That wasn't 70%. even counting repeated guests. They said there was a lot of them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 70% means some cruises had an occupancy as low as 20%. Wow. Wow. Um, it wasn't, occupancy wasn't based on rooms, but rather on how many people. Somewhere around 370 could fit into the atrium of the hotel for the big show moments. That's interesting. That That's very different than how Disney considers occupancy in other hotels mm -hmm. and cruise lines. It, they look at like how many rooms are full, how many rooms are we getting paid for? And they're like, how many people can we fit into the, the cafeteria? <laughs> That's how full we are. Let's do a head count. Yeah. It's about that'll 20. Make look, that'll make it look busier. Oh God. Uh, people. Okay. So they have some insiders. They said three individuals close to the project admitted the experience never made any money. Um, Sh shocker. You don't say. Wow. Color me surprised. 
Uh, that's partly because there were two sets of characters on duty at all times. If one performer fell ill or broke a leg, there'd be an understudy seamlessly taking center stage because Disney struggled to convey to the general public what the Star Cruiser was. It basically was like an interactive, immersive acting thing. So yeah, if you're on this cruise ship for it's two- LARPing. LARPing. For two days, but I'm like, okay, so the captain breaks her leg and all of a sudden there's a new captain. And it's like, hey, I talked to you yesterday. It's like- Same character. It's the same character, just different actors. I thought yeah. she said same Karen, different day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> same that's Karen, better. different- like Captain Karen. Same like Karen, different day. Uh, there were silver linings that were hard to ignore. The Star Cruiser earned the highest guest satisfaction ratings of anything in Disney history. Bull. Okay. I'm not going to say bullshit because the people who did this were the diehard like sequel fans or the people looking for an immersive experience. And it is like or Disney it, pixie dusters, yeah. pixie dusters. You're not going to get average people doing this thing. So they're going to go into it and just be completely wowed by everything. You know, you spend that much money too. You're not going to admit to yourself that you just burn $5,000. Cause that would be stupid. Well, For some people, that's nothing for most people. That's like, Oh my God. Anyway. So here's, um, Here's the survey. This is what it, uh, they said that they paid them, see, they paid them between $150, $250, and they had to sign an NDA. Okay. Wait, so if you got past the pre-screen qu questions, eliminated those of certain professions, like bloggers or journalists. Yes. Who, you know. Um, those who, who had completed grad you, school? You mean the ones, the ones that you, that you brought in to show for you. Yes. Um, and oddly, those who completed graduate school, you were paid a fee between $150 and $250 to sign. So not only they shut it down. Not only have they spent a lot of money on this, they yes. paid people money to fill the survey out. Are you serious? Yeah, and there were 71. Okay, that's not an exit interview then. 71,000 people. Is well, that right? Some of them are duplicates though. They yeah, but more still, than that's th times okay. 150. 150 dollars But you couldn't be a blogger. Well, yeah, what, because. What, you don't trust them to be honest? Oh, how ironic. How ironic. <laughs> Sorry, that's just funny to me. Don't let the bloggers or journalists, because we brought them in and paid them off, but with, with cupcakes and free trips to give us glowing reviews, but we can't trust their judgment now. Oh my God. The post, the post star cruiser survey consists of four sections, pre-arrival on board in your room and overall. That's, wow. I, I think they do this at brothels too. <laughs> pre-arrival on board. Okay. How was, how was that in your room? How was that? And overall, yes. Uh, with an additional questionnaire that guests were meant to fill out about the moments that shaped my house. on star cruiser experience. The questionnaire was broken down by the day with markers for the various activities like return from Batu or dinner, taste around the galaxy. <laughs> Some of the questions on the survey were incredibly granular, like how long did it take you to prepare your character? You're encouraged but not required to come up with a detailed backstory before. People don't get that. Most people don't get that. And people it's a LARPing hotel. You need to have your own OC. You need to have yeah. dress like your character. You need to know where your character's from and all the details about your character. You didn't have to. But that's what they wanted people to do. Some were far broader, like what events impacted your personal story? Others were even more telling, like asking, are you an introvert or an extrovert? Okay, interesting, because we talked about this back when they had this lovely brain fart. We're like, it's a LARPing hotel. And we were calling it a LARPing hotel before yes. a lot of people were calling it a LARPing hotel. Because we do cons stuff all the time. They always have LARPing. And I said, you know, then somebody who is more introverted is not going to like this because they're going to be, you're kind of being, they say you don't have to engage, but if you want to do the stuff you paid for, you do. And I think the problem is if you're somebody who's more introverted, you're not going to want to be put on the spot all the time. And it's going to be very exhausting. If you're like an introverted person and you are, um, you have to engage, you have like so much time that you can, if you can do it at all, you can do it. And then you just get, it, it's emotionally exhausting. And I know this because I'm an introverted person. And you wouldn't think that from this video, these videos. And you wouldn't think it if you've met me at shows. But Neon can vouch. I get very, very tired. And later on, I'm pretty much crawling behind him to hide because I'm so worn out from dealing with, you know, being on the spot, you know, and things like that. I just, it just exhausts me. I, that, that's actually true. I'm actually, I think I'm a reluctant extrovert. I think uh, mostly people piss me off. But I can deal with them, <laughs> but mostly they piss me off. Yeah, I just, I just get tired. I'm like, I just, it's just a lot. And if you're somebody who's introverted, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, the kids are like that. Uh, yeah. Our daughter, especially, is just like, yeah. You can I, do it for a while and then you can engage, but you get to a limit. And something like this would put you out of your comfort zone the whole time. Yeah. It's exhausting. So, so uh, Disney's trying to get something or get at something. Yeah, for 250 bucks. Yeah, they're trying to. 
Um, they said when the Disney Institute is sim similarly ambitious and ill fated venture at Disney World where guests signed up for classes or listened to lectures from Martin Scorsese closed, no surveys were sent out. They just closed it and moved mm -hmm. on. Other things they've done they didn't send out surveys for when they got rid of. Yeah. So that's Disney Quest and stuff with their surveys? They did surveys before deciding to close it. I think they did surveys because they were kind of looking like, what we got to do, mm -hmm. you know, to fix this but thing. But they weren't like saying, you know, oh, we're closed. Here's an exit interview. I don't think so. I, I didn't hear anything about it. Now, there, there was some talk about, um, you know, what they're going to do with uh, Figment and Journey to Imagination because they were doing surveys. about. Usually, you can tell what Disney's up to or what they're thinking about based on the surveys. And they'll, mm -hmm. they'll actually come up to you in the parks. They'll... They'll send them to you if you've been to the parks recently. But yeah, there were some surveys going around about Figment. And the bloggers picked up on that. And they're like, oh my God, they're going to get rid of Figment. Mm -hmm. So that's probably why they're like, yeah, do not tell the bloggers. But it doesn't matter. It's their Bloggers, no. It's already up on Pirates and Princesses. We all know. <laughs> Tessa pointed to the questions about the in-room AI droid D3 and the data pad, which seemed to emphasize cheaper technological touch points over costly person-to-person -person interaction. That was one of the biggest complaints, though. $5,000, and what would you have to do? Oh, mobile apps. Shitty yeah, mobile it was, apps. Yeah, that's what we joked about. It's like, you know, it's all like, oh, look, you can play these games on your phone. Now, wait a second. This is what we talked about there, Len. No, I like Len. I'm not, I'm not whatever. The, the perfect thing would be a one-day experience with an overnight stay in the hotel. That would allow them to use the cabins and the restaurant and still give everybody all the play, all the benefits, and you get to stay, say you can stay in the hotel, but that price point, it would be like half. Um, no, I think they got to do more than that. I think you can't just be like, yeah, we're just going to, because if they, if it was that simple, they would have done that already. Right. They would have been like, oh. But yes, we said this a long time ago. Yeah, they 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 did this with uh, the cruise lines too. You know, they week long cruise is too much. That's okay. We have like a you know, we have three like day. Three day ones now. Like yeah. a three day and a four day cruise now, because a lot of people can't do a week. So, you know, if they were, if, cause that's easy, that is an easy fix. I think they got to get the effing thing. They start over. Well, here's one of the problems. I'm going to say it flat out. You did Disney's trilogy, Disney's yes. secret trilogy. People don't like your damn secret trilogy. People, Star Wars has fallen off a cliff since Disney came near it. You had a win with, uh, with Rogue One and you, you kind of were doing okay there. And then even the force awakens, you know, I, Personally, thought it was just a rehash or everything, but a lot of people liked it. You had it, you were you're doing good. Promised everybody be reunited. Then you just went off a cliff the other way, and just add, you know everything's gone down into a flaming pile at this point. With everything you keep doing, and every show gets worse and worse as far as viewership's concerned. And that's what you went with. Yeah. So if it were up to me, here are some some too expensive and the wrong trilogy. Yes. Some unsolicited advice, Disney. You should have listened to your Imagineers. Originally, for those of you who don't recall, uh, it did come out that Disney was going to build uh, you know, Galaxy's Edge around the original trilogy, which would have been a slam dunk on par with Harry Potter. People would have just showed up at the parks to go to George Lucas's Star Wars, to go to Tatooine and Hoth. Oh, if and I had Endor. gone to Hoth, I'd have been there, man. Could you imagine, like, those. I would have been like, an Endor? I'd been like, yeah. Well, you can tell, you can tell that Batu is supposed to be like a, a mashup of Tatooine and Endor. The I way really they wish they had Hoth, though. I really do. You get oh, the walkers cool. in there. It'd be cool. Yeah, no, make it icy. It'd make it really air conditioned and just be like, yeah, you're in the, you're in the base. Oh, that now. costs money. It costs money. We can't do that. They'd have like a Wampa cooling cave. They'd serve Coke products. There you go. You like know? they said the bear. Yeah. Like they did with the bear. Instead of the bear, they got a freaking Wampa. I, I actually think that was fun. Anyway. Uh, anyway. So they had a chance to do that. They could have made this thing as good as Wizarding World where you're literally like walking into the set. I think people want it. They want what they know. You're telling them, use your imagination to make your own adventure. I think you you vastly overestimate people. Yeah. I mean, could you, God, could well, you? I have to work for it? <laughs> it's a vacation. I just Give think, me what I want. I just think about this. Like, I mean, it's cool to see the Falcon, but it wasn't as impressive to me as like, there's Hogwarts Castle. There's Diagon Alley. I feel like. I don't know. The Falcon was pretty damn impressive. It was, I was very excited to see the Falcon. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, the ride should have been better. The ride's not the best. The ride's not good. But the Falcon, I was. I, yeah, but that was it just. Made like, me cry. I love the Falcon. And then that's basically it. Like, I mean, it's actually worth going to, I guess, just to see the Falcon, just to get, ride. I actually like the Falcon left after, less after Solo. <laughs> You, know, you, ruined, you ruined the origin of the Falcon. Now I know there's some, you know, activist bot in running the Falcon. Oh now. my God. Yeah, I know. Phoebe Waller-Bridge lives inside the Falcon's computer. 
I can't stand Spoiler. her on a good day. Anyway. Can't stand her on a good day. Um, yeah. So anyway, they, there's another there's another designer that said that uh, you know they think this is an exit an exit interview. They're trying to exit this thing with as much data as possible. Um, they said that they were going to do a game of Thrones experience with Warner brothers. And, uh, yeah, they just don't see it happening. This industry insiders have a star cruise of resurrection. I don't know. They got the building. I mean, it's a damn waste of space, but you know what Disney usually does is they shut stuff down and then they turn it into uh, a corporate events center that you can rent. Did you know, some people don't know this. A lot of the attractions, they actually would let you rent them out for corporate events mm -hmm, and for parties. True. And um, they would actually close them down, but they'd bring food and stuff in. Yep. They do that. Hollywood Studios does it. They do it uh, at Epcot. They did do it. They did it at Animal Kingdom. Animal Kingdom? Because you, you did it at Pandora. Pandora, yeah. They actually closed down. And, and a lot of the lands, the way that they build them now, they build them so they basically can rope the land off. Mm -hmm. Toy Story Land was built specifically because there's that long stretch of like nothing. Mm -hmm. But they did that so they could, they have uh, bushes on wheels yes. and they basically block it off <laughs> or they were, I don't know what they're doing lately, but they were blocking it off. Like, oh yeah, we're renting this out for a corporate event, but they had uh universe of energy. They used to do dinners in the universe, like corporate dinner in the universe of energy. So you could sit there and look up at the dinosaurs. That would freak me out. That would be weird. It would freak me out. I'm not going to lie. It would, uh, that would freak me the hell out. I'd be I, like, I'm out of here. They, didn't they, they, I know when the great movie ride ended, they had a big thing in there too. Yeah, you could you could actually rent it out. I think it was the base was like, I think it was like $20,000. But you could, for corporate events, you could rent out. And they they cater them and everything. They come in. They had a whole thing. There's like a, like a whole secret website where you can go rent out these Disney events uh, or Disney venues for events. But they would. They would rent out the great movie ride. They rent it out and... Yeah, Geeky's Geeky's kind of salty because I got to I got to do, and I feel bad because I really want her to go. She should have gone, but I got to. I do. love how the her, her, the rule changed that it could be more than one person after. Yes, I was not happy about that. Um, so I got to do uh, an event, a Disney event at the uh, Epic Stunt Spectacular Indiana Jones, and I got to go in and I could take pictures of like all the buildings. And you can see all the. I mean, what was amazing about it is they had all the the details inside the buildings that you would never normally see. But it was weird that they had food there. They just like just like wheeled out a bunch of tables and they just like put like buffets in the middle of this damn thing. And, uh, you know, I was told I wasn't allowed to take anybody. And then I found out that other people were taking people and I wasn't yeah. real happy about that, but, uh, that was the same trip as, as Pandora. They, they locked down Pandora for us. Can we just talk about something else? Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, but I'm just saying they do this. They do this. And I could totally see them being like, hey, you want to do like a Star Trek convention in our Star Wars LARPing Star Trek. <laughs> our Star Wars LARPing hotel? Hey. They're not going to do that. Oh, my God. They'll do like, they'll open it for celebration. Well, okay. So that was the other thing, too. They said if if they don't do a massive retheme, which I'm telling you, dinner with Darth Vader. If you did the Bespin thing, freaking Darth Vader shows up at dinner, people would pay for that. Not well, $5,000. Well, maybe pretty, too, because of clouds and stuff. It would be maybe. awesome. It's basically like uh, Space 220. Yeah, but that was a joke, too. That was a whole nother. It wasn't that good. That was so expensive and not good. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, so... Yeah, they could fix every, everything wrong with Galaxy's Edge and the Star Cruise and everything. Honestly, could have been fixed if it was just original trilogy because everybody knows and loves original trilogy. It is timeless. It is classic. People that hate Disney Star Wars would still go just because it's original trilogy and they won't, they won't freaking listen. But they said another possibility for it. Uh, people thought maybe they would just open it seasonally. Like Halloween Horror Nights. We like, mentioned that before, too. Yeah. So what, like Life Day but or something? The problem with that is it's not going to bring enough money to pay for itself. No. And then you have to hire cast each time you're doing it seasonally. It just seems like an awful lot of training and investment for just opening it seasonally. To me, that just seems like not as likely. So this is this is uh, kind of unfortunate, I, I guess. Uh, this is this is someone who's been on the Star Cruiser five yes, times. Yes, I saw her. Brooke Geiger McDonald. She's on Twitter all the time. Okay. I'm, a, I'm a super fan. Did he super fan? Okay, well, she got a tattoo. They all yes, got, okay. They all got matching tattoos of this thing that got shut down. Wow, well, that sucks. Poorly aged things. Hey, look, I look, I appreciate, I appreciate your excitement. I do. I appreciate your excitement. But like, ev this guy definitely has a tattoo. That guy <laughs> definitely has a tattoo. I appreciate your excitement, but everybody was calling the time of death on this thing as soon as they announced the pricing. They're like, there's no way there are enough people that are going to go LARP in Disney's sequel trilogy era, 
you know, for $5,000. I'm sorry. Did you read her crap? She pointed to a moment on her last voyage when she was walking back from Batu to get on the special transport that shuttles you back to the Star Cruiser. Wow. The, the box truck? And this is like her fifth time, you know, and how much money is that? 25 she looked, grand. She looked around, taking in the beauty of the corridor that so few people have seen. What an elitist. Mm. And she started to weep. It was such a loss. One of the passenger service crew, referred to as the Blue Crew, Blue crew in Star Cruiser lingo, grabbed her hand and said, we're going to get on this together as one. Together as one is what they say on the Star Cruiser all the time, is official mo- unofficial motto of the experience. The community can't go away, McDonald said. We're not going to let it. Shortly after the final voyage, you know, the heroes of Halsey and a fan group organized a meetup at Planet Hollywood and Disney Springs. You know, in the shopping district, and performers <laughs> from the, gla- the gal- galactic Star Cruiser mi- mingled with guests. It probably looked more like Star Wars than the Star Cruiser. I'm sorry. Let's. Be- <laughs> I'm, I, I'm so. <laughs> so, a few people have seen this corridor. I'm an elitist. Oh my god, cry! And I was one of the. I'm part of the heroes of Halcyon. What? All five of you? How? How do you explain? Okay, so in 20 years' time, how the hell do you explain to people like? Hey, what's your tattoo? Oh, it's a Star Wars thing. Oh, I don't recognize that from Star Wars. What's Star Wars? One, one will be the first question. Oh, that was that space thing that Disney Oh, did, people yeah. are still going to know what Star Wars was. They'll, <laughs> they'll, like, they'll know A New Hope, Empire, and Jedi. <laughs> that, that's basically it, right? So, like, oh, it's a Star Wars. Okay, what's that? Oh, it's from the Galactic Star Cruiser. What I'm the like, hell is that? What the hell is that? Oh, it was this hotel in Disney. Well, it sounds really cool. Star Wars hotel. That'd be money in the bank. Well... Yeah, it cost too much money and it closed after a year. It's like, well, that's really unfortunate. What the hell were they thinking? That's okay. Her and and, and 19 other friends all have a tattoo because they're all part of this fan group. All of these people, right? Because they're they're bigger Star Wars fans than you. They got to see those corridors and you didn't. You did. You'd be crying too. It only cost her 25 grand. (laughs) You'd be crying too because it cost so damn much. Holy hell. Look, I'm not going to tell people how to spend their money. I don't care. And there are people who I'm sure they did it and they thought it was like the bestest thing ever. I'm sure, you know, especially for people that want to live in the sequel trilogy era, mm-hmm. they probably thought it was like the best thing <laughs> ever. But Those people can't afford it. Anyway, most sorry. people. Yeah. God, I just, yeah, it's like, look, I think it will come back as, as something, um, because that is a waste of space. Uh, that being said, the whole damn land is a waste of space. It, if it were just original trilogy, the general public would have eaten it up, not at five thousand dollars. Just original trilogy and just a one day thing. Yeah, I mean, I think it would or even if it was a two day thing, the prices were too high. I mean, offset it by making some of the food not included or something. You know, buffets included. If you want the extra meals, whatever, just you know, charge more or whatever. But it was, it was, it was not. First of all, they took everything that was supposed to be immersive of Star Wars uh, Galaxy's Edge. They, they moved it to the paid walled Star Cruiser. Yeah. But then even then they did it on a cheap and they, they yep. cheapened it down far to less than what it was supposed to be. Yep. Okay. And, and just, I just can't get past her being like, oh, my God, we all have 20 of us have tattoos. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You, you, you plums don't understand. You didn't see the corridors. No one grabbed your hand. They said, let's see this go together. No one did it for you. They did it for me because I'm I'm me and I'm an elitist, whatever. But you know, whatever. I'm sorry, I just can't get past. I just feel like I'm really missing out now. (laughs) We debated. We debated heavily about. Actually, was squeaking and wanted to go. Doing it just. He's not a Star Wars fan. Because yeah, right. He just wanted to say he did it. Well, that's, I think, exactly. I think it was like one of those things where we're like, okay, this thing is not going to last long. Should we do it just to say we did it? Could we have done it? Yes. But then I would have been mad at myself <sighs> for spending that much damn money. Hell yeah. That's a that lot of money. That doesn't count the flights. That doesn't count. You have to, if you want to go to the parks at all, you have to go to the hotel for a few more days. So, like, no. I am a cheap son of a bitch. Um, and I, you know, e- even if I could afford it, I'd be like, what the hell? That was a lot of money. When we saw the atrium, oh, I'm sorry, the, the area on the on the ship that's supposed to look like a Florida atrium, we were just like, no. And the and you can use the force to make the rocks jiggle. We were just like, oh my God, how much you're charging? Jiggling rocks. You know, because I was like, I, I, I looked at her, I'm like, can we get, can we get $5,000 worth of content out of this trip? If we could get $5,000 worth of content out of this trip, uh, it could pay for itself, maybe, maybe. But then I'm like, that's that's just so 
cringy. It came down it's to not wanting cringy. to go. And you even had the you even had the the people working the floor. <laughs> that's, that's bad. <laughs> You had your cast members uh, attacking you on Instagram. Oh, yeah, because I was saying stuff about it. Like, this doesn't look good. After what I said. And the one wow. guy that was playing the Commander Cody or whatever his name was, was like, or whatever the hell his name, I think something like that. He was like having a meltdown at me on Instagram. And I'm like, I don't think it was going to look good on Disney's end to have one of your cast members attack somebody who says it's too expensive. They knew. I, I, I'm sorry. You can't tell me that after a first, the first uh, couple of weeks that they didn't know. Like, oh, this was a huge misfire. This was not a good idea. <laughs> I just think it's funny they made their captain look like Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Captain okay, Karen. Can we please wrap this Let's up? Let's wrap this. I don't this. think it's even warranted as much as we've talked about it. No, it's just like, I, if it comes back, they really massively have to rethink it. And it's got to be a hell of a lot cheaper. Good luck with that. Good luck with that. We're going to wrap it up. Yes. Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.